brought to you almost live from the dude in the basement studios. Why? Because that's where the good stuff is. It sips, suds, and smokes with your smoking host, the good old boys. Suds, suds, suds. It's time for more suds. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another sud segment where we always stay six feet away from anything but a great beer. Joining me today at the table is good old boy Dave. Uh, hi, baby. (laughs) (laughs) Nice. (laughs) Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. <laughs> Hi, Dave. Hi. <laughs> Good boy, Kendall. It's a pleasure My name to is be Kendall. Here. I'm a model. My favorite part of my body is my broad shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> Finally got one. He does Thanks, have Dave. broad shoulders. <laughs> wow. I appreciate it. But it is a pleasure <laughs> to be here. I didn't expect that. I don't usually get an intro sound. It's about time. Yeah, it is. You've earned it, man. You've yes. It. Yes, you have. Reverend Mark, yes, hello. Yes, yes, yes. Blessings and benedictions of great beery cheer. <laughs> You're accused of heresy on three counts. Heresy by thought, heresy by word, heresy by deeds, and heresy by action. Four counts. You got me. Good old boy Drew. Hi. So glad to be back. <laughs> I'm working on one for you. So don't worry. I'll get you. And I'm just, well, it's me, Julie. You're the boss. I, I'm, I'm something. Today, we are... Taking over, well, a brewery, that is. We've all seen these funny-looking bottles on the shelves in the beer store. You know, they're like kind of ceramic-looking and have a cute little pink elephant. Delirium, that funky Belgian brand from Wiga Brewery. God. That was cute. Well, anyways, the the funky Belgian brand from... Wiga. Wiga. Wiga Brewery. Wiga. Wiga. Which is a brewery founded in 1906 by Leon... Wiga. Thank you. I was going to say all together now. (laughs) In the city of... Wiga. Oh, sorry. Oh, shoot. We didn't look that pronunciation up. (laughs) Um, I'm just going to say Mel. Yeah, Mel. (laughs) You know. (laughs) In East Flanders, Belgium. Please forgive me. Belgium, if I'm saying this incorrectly. I do really like your beer, though. So we will be talking about these beers in just a minute. But first, this Sud segment is brought to you by... Pull My Finger. It's the dating app for marriage-minded singles who want to skip past the excitement and, well, hard work of new relationships and get right to the good stuff. Forget the little black dress and go straight to sweatpants and an old t-shirt. No more glamour shot profile pics, no makeup, no filters, no problem. When you're ready for the real thing and you don't have time to stop and smell the roses, pull my finger. Download today. Okay, that was a really interesting ad, wasn't it? Well, good old boy Dave, why don't you hit with us hit us <laughs> with a little Wikipedia knowledge. Give me the, the Wii U? Okay. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so this is from Wikipedia, the source of all human knowledge. The site of the brewery has been in operation, brewery Huig, uh since sixteen fifty four. That's a kind of a long time ago. Wow. In nineteen oh six, Leon Huiga purchased an existing brewery in the town. It was not called Brewery Wiga at that point. The brewery acquired the person uh, present name in 1938. What do you think they called it between 06 and 38? Just Leon's Brewery? Uh, <laughs> while the company initially brewed a regular Pilsner, oh, I bet that was pretty good, it soon began brewing the kinds of beers now typically known as Belgian including a series of beers under the Delirium tag with pink elephants on the label. The best known of these is Delirium Tremens, a blonde Belgian ale. Other brew- beers include a Christmas beer and a beer called Deliria. 
a beer selected from 65 entries by women brewers, in addition to a number of fruit beers with low ABV. Wiga has acquired several smaller Belgian breweries, including uh, Artveld Grand Cru in 1987, Briery Beerturin in 1993, something I can't pronounce in 94, and another thing I don't want to say in 99. So go to Wikipedia and read more if you would like. Why, thank you. Yeah. With your knowledge, courtesy of Google. My reading skills. (laughs) Good old boy, Kendall. Why don't you tell us the lineup for today? The beers we'll be tasting today are Delirium Tremens, one of probably the most well-known of the flight. Delirium Red, Delirium Nocturnum, the Delirium Noel, and the Delirium Deliria. Yay. Good, nice. Yes, very nice. Reverend Good Mark, nice. would you mind giving us the Suds ratings for today? Well, I'd be honored. Today, we will be discussing the ratings of these beers with the Suds ratings plus our own signature belching sounds. Are you Colonel Flanders? <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking more uh, of Foghorn Leghorn. I say, I say boy, these, these beers. <laughs> I'm from Southern Flanders. <laughs> and so, here are, here are how our ratings will go. One, that sucks. Give me anything but a butt. Number two, and I do mean number two. (laughs) Was that a belch? Number three. Ah, what a relief. Number four. You know, a body should really not make that sound. And number five. Listen to that hang time. Give me another. sound like it hurt wow yeah i swear those get longer and longer every episode that's what she said oh geez thanks dave so before we get into tasting these beers reverend mark let me pick your brain oh let's talk let's about talk. beers from belgium yeah and style wise what comes to mind for you well, of course, I think of the great Abbey tradition, um, and I've said for years, and one of these days I'll follow through, when I put my world beer tour together, it will start and end in Brussels. <laughs> cool. And so I like Belgian beers for a number of reasons. One, just because I practice a little bit of beer making on the side just as a hobby, and uh, what really interests me and intrigues me and satisfies me about Belgian beers is that the style parameters are oftentimes very broad and nebulous. They can be. And uh, I mean, certainly to me, the triple is the quintessence of simplicity made profound, you know, so I guess I would start with that. You know, it's all it takes is just almost entirely Pilsner malt, maybe a little bit of aromatic and uh, the right kind of yeast and it just is just one of those summer and all ye- all season beers, but I especially like a really cold triple, just slightly warming up if I'm just going to have one beer a day. Sure. Yeah. sure. So, um, yeah. So, it, of course, we we know of the Belgian beers many times being the the agra- the gravity being augmented a little bit with uh, with beet sugar, and uh, of course, we have found out since then that it's mostly just table sugar these days but uh you know that also adds to the higher level of attenuations which in my for my taste i like even the really you know high gravity triples and quadruples you find it a little less with quadruples or the darker beers but that you'll find a higher level of 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 attenuation and things finishing a little bit more on the dry and spicy Mm -hmm. side so Mm -hmm. i Mm -hmm. i personally appreciate that but I think it's also just the variability of style in that you can you can sample five different triples or quadruples um, wherever you want to go up and down the scale and and there there's allowance for great variation, so there's no one right way mm-hmm. 
Um, yeah, I like that. Well, then, yeah. So you've got the, you know, you've got the Abbey and the Trappist styles, <clears throat> which what's that's what's really cool about Belgium is because they've got like three or four different beer traditions. You know, then you've got the Goose, right? You know, and you can get the Pharaoh and the all Lambic, the, the great Lambics, yeah, yeah, yeah no. the fruited Lambics is a whole yeah. other family. Yeah, that's a whole thing. And then you've got Flanders Red and Flanders Brown. Uh, which is like its o- other own thing. You yeah, know? yeah, um, yeah. And I, I, I especially like the um, the 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 spirit of brewing that you know. In, in earlier days, I mean, we know that that you have to really dial in sanitation. You know, as as you're dealing with uh, products that, uh, I mean, it's 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 very very costly to have to have to dump. Uh, 10 barrels of beer because of some sort of infection. But also, as you, you know, as you look at the way, you know, some of these great beers were originally uh, processed with open fermenters and transferring with garden hoses. And I mean, there's just something, (laughs) there's, there's just something that's, that's kind of uh, unique and not to be repeated ever again. So I always have a taste of the old world whenever I uh, (laughs) imbibe one of those. It's like when Cantillon moved to their new, place they sprayed the whole place down with cantillon yeah you know just yeah. to get the the yeast onto everything mm-hmm. did they move the spiders too uh, i think the spiders had to move themselves they didn't get like a, a stipend okay yeah uh, well, yeah and, you know it's new world they yeah. don't pay for everything i guess so but it's really I, to me it's really interesting how you can run the gamut from the triples which are very you know dark fruity um, but very yeast forward, and then you have the lambics, which are really you know tart and sour, and the gouzes. Low ABV. Yeah, yeah. but mm-hmm. like so much flavor for a lower ABV too, which I think is you know really interesting and cool. It's not just like one particular style. Well, we will get to the beers right after this brief interlude. Hey, welcome back, everyone. Settle in, because now we're going to get to the goods. We are talking about Delirium Brewery, and um, we're doing a brewery takeover. So the first beer from them we are going to talk about is Delirium Tremens, 8.5% ABV. It is a slight pale blonde and um, has fine and regular effervescence that ensures a fine and stable head. Slightly malty with a touch of alcohol and a little bit of spice. And there you go. Wow, that was just... Odd thing to name a beer after. (laughs) You know, the DTs. Yep. Mm -hmm. But they tie it in with the pink elephant. So, and everybody loves the pink elephant. I don't know if you guys have ever seen the merch from Delirium, but you can get a little stuffed pink elephant. You can get a pin. You can get shirts. You can get a pink elephant thong if you want. What? Ooh. Yeah. It's I could weird. have done without knowing that existed. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. weird because it has the trunk coming off the front. I, you know, actually, I just made that part up, but that'd be pretty awesome. Wow. We may see one of those in the future. Yikes. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> uh, Reverend Mark, are you giving us a prelude to the end of the show? <laughs> right. <laughs> wow. And for those of you that don't know, um, this is classified as a Belgian strong golden ale. Yeah, definitely a classic example. And one of the things in this flight, uh, you might not be able to find all these delirium beers at your local uh, beer or liquor store, but I pretty much guarantee you they're going to have this one. Yeah. yeah. You're always going to find it. They've got it in four packs of cans now these days, too, don't they? Which is cool. Correct. Yeah, they do. I, I would like to try that. I, I bet it'd be, you know, you know it's a little fresher. Some of those bottles probably sit a little while. Yeah. This is probably not most people's everyday drinking beer. Well, it's like everybody's getting away from bombers anyway. Right. So The last time I had this, it was out of a can, and I will say that it was a little brighter. Yeah. Mm. Um, I actually pick up not even the four pack, but usually they're available in the single 16 ounce cans. And I just, yeah, I always get one. Uh, I almost always get one. River Mark gets it at the gas station for his drive home. That with my Colt 45. <laughs> An Abbey Roadie. <laughs> yeah. But for such a classic, I mean, easy, you know, easy drinking beer, it's got so much flavor to it. Mm-hmm. It's This one's definitely gotten better too as it's warmed up. So. Yeah. 
Most of these beers, yep. you don't want to drink them cold right out of out of the fridge. Pop them open, let them set, pour them into a glass, and you know, give it fifteen minutes, and they'll be better. Yeah. And, unless you're yeah. typically a like a Bud Light Budweiser drinker, then drink it as cold as you can because yeah. you're probably not going to like these additional <laughs> com- complex flavors that develop. Well, in that case, you should yeah. probably just give it to somebody else and let them drink it. <laughs> like me, yeah. yes. <laughs> give it to Reverend Mark. You know. He'll take I, yeah, I agree. This 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 ban- this beer expands uh, with ambient temperatures, uh, infusing it. Well, let's the yeast come out more. The malt is definitely still there, though. That's what I'm liking on this mm-hmm. one. Has a little bit of that warming sensation going on. Yeah. it's definitely a big beer. It's what eight and a half percent. Yeah, mm-hmm. so it's uh, not it's boozy, up, but but you know it's it there. warms. Yeah, yeah I, I like what you said. It warms you up a little bit. Yep. I wouldn't call this a lawnmower beer. If it was, your lawnmower, your lawn would not be in straight lines. Yeah, you'd oh end up in your neighbor's yeah. Yeah. lawn. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. This isn't a lawnmower beer. I mean, although the color would lend itself to this being lawnmower This is a George lawnmower Jones type. lawnmower beer. Yes. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> Just stay away from any concrete bridge abutments. You have to, under, you have to know country wow. music history to get that one. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's... Yeah, that. used to drive by that bridge daily. <laughs> God bless you, George. Yeah, yeah. Though I, I doubt that he'd be drinking something like this. But again, very classic. I like the effervescence on this too. It's mm-hmm. something that you don't see all that often. And you know, the first time I tried this, and somebody had told me to, you know, watch the bubbles on it. I mean, this was years ago. I was like, "What is that going to ruin anything?" But honestly. It's perfect for this style. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, and you get these like just little pops of flavor um, that that just like lay on your tongue. And I, I just think it's it's a classic. And if you've never tried it, you really should. You really should. Just look for the pink elephant. Yes, yes, yes. So Nocturnum from Delirium. Or Tremens. Or Tremens, rather, from Delirium. We gave a four. And it is a very stable foamy head. Yes. Oh, yeah. I didn't. I. I wanted to mention that too. It is. Um. Yeah. The head lasts on it for a very long time. Very long time. Okay. Moving on. Let's go to red. Yay. Mm. Okay. So red comes in at 8%. And of note, this is the only one that we have at the table today that is in a can. Mm -hmm. Everything else we have in the um, really cool, I guess now vintage uh, ceramic bottles. So they classify this as a fruit beer, um, deep dark red in color with a light pink compact lacing head. Soft fruity, um, the scent is soft fruity aroma with hints of almond and mildly sour cherries. And it, they say that this is an excellent dessert beer. I'd buy that. Yeah, I can. This mm-hmm. would be a great beer for a beer float. Yes. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Especially with maybe some chocolate ice Ooh. cream instead of vanilla. Yeah. Or, or just a beer slushy. Mm-hmm. I, I could totally do that. Yeah. 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 It's a little sweet, but, um, and this one is one I thought was a little better when it was colder. Uh, it kind of reminded me of maybe like an artisanal cherry soda. Yeah. It took, so. it took me back to the gro- the drugstore that I used to go to right before the movies. And they made the real cherry sodas. Mm. And you get an extra, extra squirt of the cherry. Is this with back the, with, in the yeah. 40s? It was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Sorry, Reverend Mark. Rude. <laughs> Rude. I'm working on getting that old, but yeah. But it just, you know, it conjured up some memories for me. So, which is the opposite of delirium. Yeah. You know, where yeah. you're, where you're, <laughs> knock, <laughs> knocks them out of you. <laughs> What's crazy how high the ABV is on this one, too. I mean, 8%. It does not taste it. Mm. I mean, obviously, it's, you know, the sugar that's in here, but kind of reminds me of Lindemann's, you Mm. know, in that in that sweetness vein. But um, dare I say, like a little more refined, if you will. It tastes more like a beer to me than Lindemann's. Yeah. Lindemann's is fruit juice. That Lindemann's is definitely like a soda to me. You know, that's that one is way more because of how much they back sweeten it. This one, I I don't. I almost feel like the the fruit flavors are pretty true, and I get some elderberry. It's definitely more 
dominated by the cherry, but I do think the elderberry probably adds some of that extra complexity to it or, or just some other nuance to the flavor. Yeah. Yes, yes. I could I could like reduce this in a little saucepan and, yes. and put it on my oh, pancakes. I was thinking about that. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah. Balsamic reduction, eat your heart yeah. out, do this instead. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Say not on pancakes, but on and <laughs> yeah. On, goat cheese. On a, some, yeah. Oh, wow. That'd be good. Yeah, the yeah. goat cheese. The uh, or a, tart or a, a, or a uh, caramelized top of a of a pork loin. Ooh. Dang, oh. man. All right. <laughs> okay. Well. well, you know what? We're a food podcast. We're supposed to talk about this stuff. <laughs> but I think, uh, yeah, so this is definitely a beer you could uh, make a dessert or cook with. Yeah. Yes. I yes. will say when I first picked it up, my first reaction, and I may have gotten to it a little bit warmer than uh, the rest of the host. My first thing that came out of my mouth was Diamond Hap. Um, <laughs> but I think that might be the, the elder, elderberry, yeah. um, you know, just screwing with me a little bit there. It As as the second and third sips were, were much more enjoyable, much less medicinal. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're th- like, I didn't even know what it was when I took the first sip because I, I didn't really look at the can before I took a sip. And I was like. Huh. That's pretty yeah, I was I never heard of delirium red, but that first even aroma just huge. And just the cherry Big hits cherry. you right in the face. Yeah. 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 This also conjures up a memory of my neighborhood, the uh, kids next door. Their father always smelt of elderberries. <laughs> <laughs> really? Fart <laughs> in your general direction. Your mother was a hamster and your father smelt. Elderberry. <laughs> you know, ironically, my father smelled of elderberries quite a bit too. Uh, they used him and my uncles used to make elderberry wine when I was a kid. But um, I looked up cool. that that phrase just because mm-hmm. I'm I like to read Wikipedia, you know, so yeah. whole source of human knowledge, <laughs> and uh, apparently that that was potentially a period appropriate insult in. Uh, England at one point, and it was wow. to say that your father was a drunk. Ah, yes. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. There's that. So, Delirium Red from Huiga Brewery. God, I'm going to. Huiga. I know. I I feel like I'm butchering it, and I do apologize. But well, we rated this a three. Okay. Moving on. Let's talk about. The Nocturnum. Mm. Yes, the Nocturnum. Otherwise known as Dark Blue. Dark Blue? Well, for me, Dark Blue. Yeah, because it's got... This thing ain't blue. No. The Dark Blue label. The label. Oh, whatever. The label. Well, because if if you're a couple sheets in and you're looking at all of these bottles, minus the colors, they are all the same. You know what I mean? Yep. Okay. I do like the bottle, so. Um, so for those of you that do not know, Delirium Nocturnum is a Belgian strong dark ale, and it is deep and dark. It strong. comes in at 8.5% ABV. They say that it is slightly malty with a, a nice touch of alcohol and a yep. little bit of spice. A little bit, a little bit, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I would say those things are all true. Hey, what did we rate it? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Good talk, everyone. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Great conversation <laughs> yeah, yeah. on the Nocturnum. Oh, no, no, no. It's getting no, a little no. little chocolate, maybe even a yeah. little cola going on there. Yeah. Yeah, I love that caramel kind of lends itself to a little uh, cola flavor. Chocolate, too, probably. I get a little bit of mocha. And uh, also, though, if I swish it a little bit you know it uh it does definitely have that uh that licorice and almost an an, oh, yeah. an anise not 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 terribly heavy but there's there is some some aromatic spice aspect just a kiss of it not yep. overpowering yep. at all no, no, just no, enough no. to give it some personality yep mm. i mean there is a lot of depth of flavor and i think for some people they think of a dark beer as just being roast and not much else but this style lends itself to a lot of layers, and I'm going to go out on a limb and say that part of it is because of the yeast profile. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah, of you course. know, well, but I mean, for the uneducated, it, this you're talking to me, right? Yeah, I was you're about talking to say, about Dave, right? <laughs> for the unmedicated, <laughs> <laughs> definitely not talking about me there. <laughs> but this style of beer really lends itself to the. I, I mean, if you have a good yeast strain, you're going to get a phenomenal beer, right? Mm-hmm. Um, 
it definitely adds a little bit of that fruitiness you expect, uh, which plays really well with those darker flavors. Yes, yes. Chocolate, dark fruit. It reminds me a lot of a of a very nice coffee in some respects, and that mm. not not a not a strong you know one dimensional you know bitter bitter bitter, but you know one nuanced of those, flavor. You know, you get some some mild berry flavor, a little bit of spice. There's a that 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 mocha flavor sort of lends itself to a, a roasted uh, dark yeah. roast coffee. I say I I drink a lot of coffee. What? <laughs> I think that's, I mean, uh, that's what's nice about these beers is, you know, like we said, you know, a lot of these, you don't want to drink it cold. You want to take your time with it. And and as it warms up and over time, like you'll taste very different things, like different notes will come out of it uh, over time. If you take your time and sip on it, which you probably should do with an eight and a half percent beer, if you're going to drink any volume of it, but. Yeah, and this Belgian dark strong is just a great style. And there's a, there's a lot of other good beers in this style. I'm sure Reverend Mark could mm-hmm. elaborate on mm-hmm. many of those, but it's it's just a wonderful yeah. big beer that has so much character, flavor, complexity. Yes, and and but but still, even though it's big, it's kind of delicate. Um, you know, it's not it doesn't knock you over the head like like, like yeah. broad shouldered Kindle. <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't. It, to me, it doesn't taste eight and a half percent. You know, Mm -hmm. it's still light on the tongue for as much flavor as you're getting and the layers of flavor that are there, if that makes any sense. It's not like, you know, the stouts that just sort of like sit on your tongue and don't want to move. I think that may be partially helped by that dryness that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, You know, it's not that boozy, syrupy sweetness that you would expect from a stout or a porter. Um, Gets in, does a lot of stuff, then it gets out. You yep. know. Right. And for those that are... This is a know, bottle with a message in, and the message is, beware. <laughs> <laughs> but in the case of this, I wouldn't say beware. I, I would say, you know what, if, if you're somebody that doesn't like stouts because you think that they're so heavy, a Belgian dark might be the way to go. I mean, it's it's got the roastiness of, of being a dark beer, uh, yeah. you know, of being a stout, but it's, it's still kind of, you know, it's light on the tongue and... Um, a lot of flavor, but not heavy. Well, it's weird how people are scared of dark beers. Like if you're not into beer, people naturally assume that, like, I know like for Guinness, you know, it's a stout and people are like, Oh my God, the beer's probably like crazy a- ABV and all these things. It's a very light, it is drinkable yep. beer that you could, you know, have a session with all day. And a lot of dark Belgian beers, they're not like light sessionable beers, but they're kind of, to Mark's point, delicate. Mm. And you can, they're, and they're very approachable as well. So it's kind of funny, you know. Yeah. And with all of those different flavors and complexities, this is a great beer with a lot of varieties of food. Yeah. I was just going to get into that. I mean, if you think about Belgian cuisine, and then you think about these couple of beer styles that we've already had, um, it really, it really does lend itself, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but it also can translate to American food as well. Like, what would you pair this with American food, or what kind of American God, food? I think would you, you pair have a lot of with, things with right? this. I mean, it, I think it would pair well with some desserts. But I think you could. I mean, you could have this with a steak. Yep, you know? steak yes. or like a, a beef stew. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I would yeah. not do a, a chicken or a turkey or, or anything like that. I would probably want something that has a has a little more fat and a little mm-hmm. more uh, a little a like little stronger like flavors. A good deli sandwich, like a, some pastrami or something. You know, Ooh, some or, like that. Yes. Mm-hmm. or or, or mm-hmm. get into some of the game meats, like a uh, venison. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Work yeah, really well would... with this. Sure. And if you had like a a really big juicy, like even a Kobe burger. I mean. You know, it's summertime right now at this moment. So, of course, people are thinking of, you know, barbecues and and grilling and things like that. But I, you know, like you could get you could uh, still have this beer. You could get two bottles of this and you could cook one of them down into your barbecue sauce. Like if you're making some ribs or whatever, and then you're just pounding the other one while you're grilling. Now, you might (laughs) pass out and forget (laughs) to take the stuff off. Uh, and burn all your meat. Say but, charcoal on the grill and yeah. under it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I could see pairing this with a really nice bolognese. Ooh. Oh, oh yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 
So there's many applications for this. And again, just, you know, sometimes you have to think outside the box, but it's it's just so worth it to try it. And again, if you drink the whole bottle, by the end of it, you don't care how it paired anyways. You're just sleepy. <laughs> it's yeah. a good idea if you're a terrible cook. So Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just let, yeah. the, just let the beer yeah. have a yeah. dinner party, yeah. get everyone drunk, and they won't care that your food yeah. sucks. <laughs> oh, that's, that's a fantastic idea. For our appetizer, we're going to have delirium <laughs> nocturnal. <laughs> Everybody gets a full bottle. Yeah. Followed by shots of wild turkey 101. There you go. Oh, gosh. Right. And then it's tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That, um, yeah, that's insane. That escalated quickly? Yes. Um, yeah. We're, we're showing our southern roots, aren't we? Showing something. <laughs> well, okay. So this one, Delirium Nocturnum from Wega, Wega. Wega Brewery. Gosh, bless. I'm so sorry. We rated this one a four. Uh, uh, uh. Nice. Yes. Very, very nice. And, you know, we're all, we're all drinking our stuff. That's always a good sign. Well, we will be right back after this brief interlude. People underestimate straight line winds. I mean, mm -hmm. we're underestimating straight line winds. Yes. Or big Belgian beers. Yes. People, or big Belgian beers. That's the tie in right there. People wow. underestimate, uh, you know, a Belgian strong ale. Like a straight line and wind. A straight line wind. It's like a straight line wind. It'll, it won't swirl around you, but it'll take you down. <laughs> <laughs> you better hope your roots are strong. And with that note, hi guys and girls. Oh, are we welcome recording? back? We <laughs> we are recording. We're still recording. I know. It must be the power of the pink elephant. <laughs> so, could you show a baby elephant and a mouse drunk in a cartoon that was made today in today's world? Probably not. No. Is that what that's from? Mm -hmm. It was Dumbo, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 From back in the day. Yeah, there goes my childhood. Underage <laughs> childhood drinking. Yeah. <laughs> with her, that with your candy cigarettes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. You know, they still make those. Can you believe that? No. I was yeah. in a candy store. Yeah. Uh, it was sometime last year. But, yeah, they had a variety of candy cigarettes and the bubblegum cigars. Yep. Wow. Yeah. I've seen the bubblegum oh, cigars. I remember but those, I yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, I can't even. Around. I can't even play with my grandkids in the, with the yard darts anymore. I mean... <laughs> Yes. <laughs> they are yeah. getting kind of fast, I yeah, would imagine. Yeah, you know, yeah. hard to <laughs> little suckers little are able to dive now. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Jarts. <laughs> Jarts. <laughs> well, for those of you just tuning in, <laughs> we're walking down memory lane. We are walking down memory lane. We are doing a brewery takeover of the Wega Brewery. <laughs> and we've been talking about a lot of delirium. And the next, we're going to go to Christmas time, and we're going to talk about Delirium Noel, otherwise known as Delirium Christmas. This one is big. This is 10% ABV. Dang. Man. Yes. And they're calling this a winter warmer style beer. Well, 10%, it'll warm you up. Yeah. yeah. Well, right? You drink so enough it, of that, and it'll put the X back in Christmas. <laughs> 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 wow. From the mouths of babes, right? <laughs> That's our holy man. Yeah. Say, he is a reverend, everyone. <laughs> on three counts. Is my thought, is my word, is my deed, and is my action. Four counts. <laughs> well, this is brewed only for the Christmas and New Year. Noel completes the Delirium trilogy. Its appearance is a superb, warm, copper to red color, recalling Nocturnum, yep. except oh. in its taste. It hides its subtlety by multiple levels of flavor and should be approached with confidence. So wait, it hides its subtlety? It like hides that. its subtlety. I like when uh, we read English translations of <laughs> things written in. So is, does, is that a double negative then? Yeah. I'm thinking so. Yes. With a tinge, typical Christmas, and then sauced with a sweet touch and then bitterness. Sauced? <laughs> like all of us. I think whoever wrote this was pretty sauced when they uh, 
Hey, look. I'm just if they're anything. working at this brewery, they darn well should be, right? Because they're making some good stuff. There's probably a lot of nap times at this brewery. Huh. <laughs> like with us. All right. So, I do like the color. Yep, the color is very Christmassy in color, wouldn't you say? It is. Nice yeah. red tent. Copper. But a lot of clarity. It is clear. At least to look at. Yeah. Right. <laughs> At least to look at. <laughs> you can smell that clarity. Tell us how you really feel. <laughs> well, okay. Upon sniffing, this is not necessarily a spice bomb. Which I like. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, no. because we've all had those winter warmers that you feel like you're in grandma's kitchen. All spice, nutmeg. Mm -hmm. I like to eat gingerbread, not drink it. Yeah. Right. Right. So, cheers to so, that. To that end, yes, I think that's a great thing. Plus, holiday, Christmas, your pro family's probably around. You want a 10% beer. Yes, to kind of numb you a little to help. bit. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So, I think I think they're on the right track with this one. And actually, as we as this continues to warm, I think it keeps getting better and better. And maybe it's because I keep drinking the other beers too, and then I'm drinking all high ABV beers, so Maybe that's part of it. I'm talking really fast, but I like this beer. I was sitting and thinking about the food aspect of it since <laughs> we've been talking about it. Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, you know, what would I pair this with at, at a Christmas dinner, so to speak? And it's like, no, not not turkey, you know, not ham. But ham. Ham would be good. <laughs> I was going to say, I was gonna say duck. Ooh, yeah. duck would be absolutely phenomenal with this beer. That's yeah. kind of foul. Yeah. Well, if you're a bougie duck lugger, <laughs> lo lover, Wait, then sure. <laughs> bougie Bo duck lugger. Bougie duck lugger. <laughs> that's, you know is what? Is that my new nickname? That's I know. Our new, yeah. English is a second language Zoo sometimes. I'm sorry, folks. duck lugger. <laughs> yeah. Or a, a fried Spam sandwich. Oh, my God. Yeah. Go from one extreme to the other. I like it. You know my dad? I know a dead parrot when I see one, and I'm looking at one right now. <laughs> Oh, God bless the Could pythons. you pair this with dead parrot? <laughs> no. No. Wow, I just killed the whole show. Yeah, there. no. Well, we had no. to think about it. Right? It's like, I don't believe any of us have ever had parrot before. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong. Well, you've been to a buffet. Oh. <laughs> God. I mean, if you've had, like, squab or... Uh, Cornish game head. Yeah, or, that's basically yeah. a pair. It's the same size, same bird. <laughs> <laughs> Pigeon, you know. Wow. Mm. Okay. All right. So back to the beer. Um, so it's not highly aromatic. And then taste-wise, it's a little refined in the spices, let's say. Yes. Yes, not, not overpowering, yeah. not overpowering. It's not, right, it's compared, not over. Yeah, compared to a lot of Christmas beers where you're not right, they just take the whole spice cabinet, put it in the beer. Yeah, this one is subtle. Right, yeah. If you hadn't told me it was a Christmas beer, you know, before I, you know, somebody just handed me a glass and said, drink this. I didn't know what it was. I would not say that it was a Christmas beer. I would just think it's a big Belgian dark beer, you know. And it, well, and it is a big Belgian dark beer. So I'm not understanding, like, what spices they think are in there but you know this is america we need stuff like in our face a lot more you know more hops more booze more you know whatever but i don't get a ton of spice on this thing no, no. it's it's weird isn't it yeah. and i'm not I mean, complaining about that I'm, it's I'm definitely there honest. though i mean i i got it I, it tastes like a christmas beer it's just more nuanced than most it's hard to pick yeah. out yeah. any individual spice. I mean, right. I think something with cinnamon could could then, you know, kind of interface with this. You know, yeah. there's just I don't taste cinnamon, but I'm kind of like thinking if I had, yeah, a it's nice, cinnamon ish, uh, yeah, like a bread pudding. Mm. Oh, totally. Yeah, yeah, I guess part of it is it's just hard to when you when you package something as a Christmas beer. It's hard sometimes to step away from what the expectation that's been built into your. Well, Mind is, you know. but American Christmas beers versus European Christmas beers, you know, might be completely different. Like me, I'm tasting a lot of plums mm -hmm. and I, I'm tasting mm -hmm. more of a a dark fruit Christmassy right. like nutcracker nest. Well, I was going to say like a fig pudding. Yeah. So you know, it's, I said yeah. bread pudding, but like a fig pudding. Right. It's yeah. more Father Christmas and less Santa Claus. 
Is yeah. That what you're saying? Yeah, exactly. Does that... But you don't want to leave this out for Santa Claus or the, no. the kids down the street are going to be really upset. Yeah. Oof. He's not even going to get to their house. I, no, yeah. no. He'll just be hanging out. Well, you know. although for you, it may work <laughs> to your favor. Yeah. But, get all the presents. But you know it's a Christmas beer because the elephant's wearing a Santa Claus hat. That's true. Yep. I, I know. mean, that says it all. Absolutely. Right that does say it all. Yes. Yes. Well, this one, the Noel Christmas, whatever you want to call it, from the Wega Brewery. We got. We rated this a three. Very good. Very all good. right. So now let's talk about the last one. The piece de resistance, so to speak. Save the best for last. Well. Or a really darn good one. Yeah, yeah. So what we're going to talk about right now is Deliria. Um, this is an 8.5% strong golden ale. I get Deliria. Which is also what Tremens is, but this is very different. Yeah. This is, yes. So it's a pale blonde color um, and a creamy white head, mm -hmm. which... I mean, it's still there. The head is yeah, still there. I know. It Dude, does not thing, want to yeah, leave. It's so yes. clear. Um, it, pleasant, sparkling carbonate content produces a soft, t full taste perception. Good. The aroma is very Good balanced version. with a fruity, flowery background and an initial Chardonnay impression, which evolves into a spicy, mild aroma of hops. The taste is very full bodied, full bodied and is balanced with fruity tons of apple and Chardonnay grapes. Mm, mm. This special brew is brewed once a year to mark International Women's Day mm -hmm. and I believe is even brewed by some women brewers. If well, I'm it was, yeah, they picked the recipe from a, what did I say earlier, a group of 85 that were, 85 different beers that were brewed by women. So. Which Way is very, yeah, which is very cool. Very cool. This is a pretty good duck lucker right here. I'm, yeah, this was my favorite of the flight. Agreed. It's so absolutely easy and absolutely. crisp yeah. and just, yeah, a lot of different fruity flavors going on. Delicate, ladylike. Yeah. <laughs> it's, just, it's just great beer. Yeah. <laughs> What's it, the ABV on this one? Eight, five. Eight and a half. Good grief, man. You would get so much trouble on this I beer. know, but it doesn't taste That's it. That's why I'm saying. That's this like, is more I mean, of a lawnmower beer than any other yeah. ass. Oh, but, yeah. But is, don't do yeah. it. <laughs> this although would be I, a good lawnmower beer. Although I think this is, you know, has some great nuance as it's warmed up. I, I thought it was a really good cold because mm. I made a note that I would actually drink this in a flute. Mm. Mm. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. It has a champagne-like aspect to it. Your reed would get yeah. wet. Yeah. yeah. How do you close up all the holes? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um, but um, bum. Wow. There I got is. a lot of Esther in this too. Mm -hmm. uh, Aunt you know, Esther. Aunt Esther. Yep. <laughs> the Valley of the Bones, Esther. Or <laughs> 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 Yeah, yes. this one, uh, you know, I, I was thinking about the, the category even before I tasted this. And the first thing I wrote down was like, this is a Belgian blonde, which mm -hmm. we often confuse those with the American blondes, which we think are low ABV, easy drinking beers. Two Belgian, totally different Belgian monsters. blondes start pushing this 8% range. Mm -hmm. And this is so light and easy drinking, but it's got all that big Belgian character in it. That yeah. That's why I, did, I wasn't even thinking golden strong because that that's almost a whole different level. Yeah. Uh, the crispness and the lightness of this one. Like we said, mm -hmm. chill it cold and go jump on your lawnmower. Well, I think American blondes are meant to be like, I think the methodology behind the two is completely different. Like American blonde ales are meant to be like light, almost a lager, very easy drinking beers where Belgian blondes are meant to, like all Belgian beers, emphasize the yeast uh, have more complexity, even though it's a lighter beer, um, it's still going to have a lot more going on. And be a part of that larger conversation, which you talked about earlier. You're drinking this with food. 
Yeah. And this, oh, this yeah. has oh, yeah, a yeah, lot yeah, of yeah. flavors that are going to yeah. work with foods, but like could get into some of those chicken dishes that we were talking mm-hmm. about a little yeah. bit lighter. Sure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Light pasta with some Alfredo or something. Mm-hmm. Right? I would do this with that Thanksgiving dinner with a with a big old turkey and, and they're saying all the all the fixings and, and be able to pour it for pretty much anyone at the table because it's approachable enough that even your less uh, experienced palates will enjoy it. But there's yeah. enough going it, on that it, yeah, it's it's will. similar. It's yeah. almost almost saisonny, not quite, but there's mm-hmm. some similarity mm-hmm. there, and that's why I think saison is such an amazing beer with food because it will pair with nearly anything, right? Sure. Like champagne, it, yeah. it is it is champagne for beer. We say champagne pairs with everything. Saison yeah. pairs with everything. That's but yes, that is yes, not yes, the champagne yes. of beers. You're thinking of something. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, Sorry. I was, I, that's exactly where I was going, yeah. Kendall. I was like, I, how he's tying high life into this. I'm I, really yeah. trying to figure out. It's a stretch. A, well, from a from a food pairing standpoint, anyone who's done you know fine dining or say, if people don't know what to pair, the, yeah. the go to is always champagne because yeah. it literally it yes, will pair it with will, everything. With everything. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So this is and, but not high life. But so does yeah. Miller High Life. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it well, usually pairs with sadness and you, uh, gas drink, station hot dogs. If, for you, drink, if you drink yes. enough of them, yeah, it'll pair. <laughs> yeah. But I think that's an important thing to talk about too. Is like when you're talking about pairing, the beer's got to stand up to the food, but the food's got to stand up to the beer as well. Like you're, that's why you're not going to have like a barrel aged imperial stout with a, you know, a chicken ta- yeah, or a chicken <laughs> taco. You know, uh, it's the there's, they both got to bring something to it, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. I'd have this with a pot pie, though. I bet that'd be all right. How much? <laughs> how much pot would you put in that pot pie? <laughs> Full pot, half pot, I don't full know. pot. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, I think it's safe to say that this one was the favorite of the flight. Good and chick beer, man. Good chick beer. Good chick beer. Sure. So, Deliria from the. Wega Prairie. Wega. <laughs> we rated a five. Nice. Good flight. Yay. It was great. Yeah. Yeah, I think it really was. It's another example of those bottles you see and walk probably walk past every time you go to the beer store because they're just always kind of part of the background. Definitely grab some of these and try them. Well, and I mean, all of us, I think... We have tried this multiple times yeah. over the years, and you know it's still one of those things where where you're feeling that little itch, it always comes through for you. Yep, yep, totally. Well, that is going to do it for today. Again, great episode, great flight. You can always find us where you found this episode, as well as radio, satellite, online at Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, iHeartRadio, Spotify, and nearly any place you listen to a podcast. The easiest way to find this show on your phone is to ask Alexa, Siri, or Google, play podcast Sip Suds and Smokes. We love your feedback, and you can reach us online at info at sipsudsandsmokes.com. Our daily tasting notes flow out on uh, Twitter and Instagram and all kinds <laughs> of stuff every day at Sip Sud Smokes. And our Facebook page is always buzz, buzz, buzzing with lots of news. Please take the time to rate this episode if you're listening online. Five. Five star. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, good old boy Dave, for being here. Hey, thank you for letting me be here in my place of personage. <laughs> <laughs> Good old boy, Kendall. Thank you. It was a pleasure. I always love this. Reverend Mark, thank you so much. Thank you. These these are perennial classics. I'm glad to sit around the table and imbibe with you. Good old boy, Drew. Thank you for being here. It's been a pleasure, as always. Good old boy, Kendall. Why don't you tell us about your blog? My wife and I blog about the good news of good beer at beermakes3.com. This is good old gal, Juliana. Stay safe. Keep drinking and see you next time.
This has been a One Tan Hand production of Sip, Suds, and Smokes, a program devoted to the appreciation of some of the finer slices of life. From the dude in the basement studios, your host, the good old boys, will see you all next time. Thank <laughs> you.